Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here Miss Regina Ivory, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself today. How are you doing, Regina? I am fine. I am on vacation. I needed that break. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, to... man, I'll tell you what. I'm so good, I can't stand it. Uh-oh, I, I need to be in your shoes, though. I need some, some, some more, some of that. And so, um, it, and I also have some oceanfront property in Arizona to sell you stuff. So. Oh, ocean <laughs> in Arizona? <laughs> I didn't know they had ocean front in Arizona. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they got sand front. But no, seriously, so where were you born and raised and, and all that good stuff? Born in Dallas, Texas. Woo -hoo -hoo. Go Cowboys. Uh, raised elementary years, Los Angeles, junior high, high school, Compton, lived in Long Beach. Now I'm in Riverside County in California. California. Back to Texas though after I retire. So we're waiting for you. Come on back. <laughs> uh, people much friendlier, and so are the men. <laughs> I be feeling like Beyonce when I go to Texas. I be like, what? A date? What? At home, they just be asking, can you come over to my house? Uh, no. <laughs> you, I, real quick, and this is a little off subject, but about Beyonce, a mm -hmm. friend of mine actually went to school with her in Houston. Oh, oh yeah? Okay. Yes. And you know her last name is her last name's Knowles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my uh, my dad's side of the family, his grandparents were Knowles. Oh, oh, y'all probably cousins. Maybe so. You know, yeah. you mentioned Beyonce. That's that's family right there. Yeah. Uh, ancestry dot com. That'd clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Uh, let's keep on talking about yourself. I want to hear more. Okay. Well. Uh, I'm a mother of three, grandmother of two. They're not allowed to call me grandma. They call me poo. Hey. Um, I've been in healthcare for 23 years. Um, can't wait to retire. I love dancing. That's my number one passion. And then uh, comedy. And I just love to stay busy. You know, I'm on several committees. Uh, Used to teach line dancing, and I'm getting into Chicago stepping. I love Texas swing out, and I love traveling. Um, so after my kids was grown and gone, that was my number one thing, uh, traveling. So I got most of my places out. I uh, still have a few more places on my bucket list, but I had to get a new car. Oh, Lord. I know it's messing up my bucket list, <laughs> but I'm going to get there eventually. Got Yes. So, um, but you know, I'm, a, I think I'm a pretty good person. You know, I'm a tit for tat person. That's what I really say. I'm going to treat you exactly the way you treat me. And you know, I'm loyal and I'm dependable. I don't depend on no, nobody for anything. You know, my mom taught me that she drilled that in my head growing up. You get your own stuff and you never have to ask nobody for anything. So, you know, and I work hard and I figure if I can do it and only have a high school diploma, then everybody else can do it too. <laughs> so what got you into healthcare? Uh, I, I needed some work <laughs> and I, and this place, I heard they have really good benefits. So, and, um, uh, so I, I do work for a really good company, you know, but, uh, and I ain't going nowhere. They're going to have to drag me out of there. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, so, you know, I, I'm one of them people, I'm going to try something. And I'm also learning how to DJ right now, too. So I bought all that DJ equipment, and I need some gigs to start paying for it. <laughs> well, I mean, unless it was like 50s and 60s music, I, I, I couldn't hire you. Oh, yeah, I love, I have a bunch of old school. That's what I play. 
You know, my kids be like, you put on that old music? I'm like, uh, this is my car. You don't like my music? You can walk or you can put on some earphones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Motown, Motown. Yes. Philadelphia sound, stats. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. To go to Stats Museum when I went to Memphis. I'm still waiting to go to Motown, you know, do they tour. I'm kind of scared to go to Detroit, <laughs> but I think I'm going to make it. So if, if you had to pick a favorite band from back in that day, who would be your favorite? Like my favorite oldies that's and still around today, I love the OJs. I love the Temptations, but yeah. OJs, I probably been to more day concerts than anybody else really dramatics i love the whispers um isley brothers you know i'm not old school r&b you know sound yes you know that Jimi hendrix got his start with the isley brothers oh did he? i thought it was um i i knew he got started with somebody but i thought it was i want to say no, that was Bootsy Collins got started with James Brown, I think. Yeah, Bootsy Collins started with James yeah. Brown. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking of. I could sit here and talk music all day. <laughs> I love my music. That's what gets me through all my – because I commute a lot. So from going to L.A. to, to visit my, my mom, to work way, you know, take me an hour to get to both of them. So – I have a flash drive. I put all my favorite music on there, and I, people are like, "What is he doing?" I be riding. <laughs> <It's> my song. <laughs> have you seen that concert footage where the Four Tops and the Temptations were together, and they were like having a sing off, and they would do like their hits? Find that on YouTube. Oh, you gotta watch that. That is oh, a yeah. blast. That is yeah. a blast. It's so much okay. fun. Yeah. It's just. Doing the spinners. Oh, uh, yeah. You, any of that, the, the doo wop and all that, I love all of it. Yes. Yeah, I got to play that all day. D Donnie Hathaway and Phyllis Hyman. Yeah. Do you like Four Seasons? What they sing? Uh, like, uh, let's, their favorite, or probably one of their biggest hits, uh, Sherry Baby and, uh, December 1963. I remember Sherry, baby. That's, that's like 50s, right? Oh, they, were, they were out in the 60s, but... Oh, the 60s? Okay. They had that 50s sound to it. Uh, I, yeah. I, remember the, I remember that song. I remember I used to watch like the beach movies, Beach Blanket, Bingo. So be, I couldn't wait to be a teenager so I could be like them, especially the girl who had the, the shimmy stuff on and shake and boom, and she used to knock a dude out. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be her so bad. <laughs> I was like, hey, wait to be a teenager. I always wanted to be like Han Solo, so. <laughs> Han, Han Solo from Star Wars. That was going to be oh. me. <laughs> yes. And then when I was, uh, that's when I get older, I always wanted to dress like Doris Day. I just thought she was so elegant, pretty. Not a hair out of place, beautiful skin, makeup, and she could do comedy and drama, suspense. She was growing up, she was one of my, my, one of my favorite actresses. Worst day, my, my, yeah. my mother. I don't think she's still alive. My my mother was like a huge, huge store Day fan. My yeah. my dad was more like Bobby Vinton, that kind of music. But uh, my mo mother, Doris Day and and uh, Jan and Dean, those were her favorites. Susan Haywood, I used to like. She's my friend mom, the white version of my friend mom. <laughs> And Atlanta uh, Turner, yeah. Uh, back back in the day, it wasn't that many. Uh, only one I really remember being on TV back in the day is like Lena Horne, which she was, she was so light when I was younger. I didn't know really what she was. And um, Carol Diane Carroll, yes, because she was Julia. And 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 still today, when somebody said, "Oh, can you help me clean up?" I'm like, "Do I look like Hazel?" <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch that show. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, those were good shows, though. You don't mm. see stuff like that. I mean, it was corny, but it was still it was good. You know, it was you wholesome. You can find anything on YouTube. Well, 
streaming channels help you can find some of those old shows yeah even I like you I went uh, I watched uh because I used to like this show called that's my mama with Clifton Davis oh yes I used yeah. to watch that too yeah I used to love that show and then I'm like, looking at some of them I was like oh my god I know him from some you know another show he was acting back then you get you see people from when they were younger that you didn't remember but you see them now as older on other uh shows I said oh they sustaining well, you look at Clifton Davis, you know, when he, he did um, That's My Mama, and then he gets on a show like Amen, and Amen. he still looks like the same. Yeah, I watch that every morning when I get dressed. Amen. Yes, they just went started back with season one. It come on 6 o'clock out here. I get up at 5.30, so I listen to the news, and then when 6 o'clock come, I'm like, keep turn on Amen, listen to that till I leave. <laughs> You know, I always loved the Jeffersons with Sherman Hemsley, but I liked it better when he was on All in the Family. That was, that was. Yeah, him and Archie together. Him and Archie together. They were like perfect. Yeah. You know, you know, he really didn't like playing, playing Archie. He used to, I hear he used to get into it with Norman Lear about some of the stuff that he wanted him to say. Mm-hmm. Kind of, but I, I did. I loved all of the family. I still watch it today. But when I was younger, I didn't really know too much. I just knew I liked the show. But now, as getting older, and I this is some of the stuff. But I just still love me some Archie Bunker. <laughs> yeah, I think people miss the point of the show. It was to show how ignorant he really was, and, yeah. and you know, that was supposed to be like, okay, I don't want to be an Archie Bunker. So you, you remember the show with uh he with uh Sammy Davis Jr. and he tricked him and kissed him on the cheek and all just like <laughs> yeah, oh yeah my favorite ones <laughs> oh, I watch it. I watch that sometimes when I get in from work if I don't have anything to uh, but I like the 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 shows before Gloria and Mike moved out those are my favorite ones. Because uh, right now they're showing the ones where now they're doing Bunker's Place, I think, on the show channel that I watch them on. Yeah, I couldn't get that much into it. Yeah. You know, they had, they had, of course, the Jeffersons was a spinoff. And then there was uh, that show about Gloria at one time. But, you know, there was another spinoff to that show. So, you know, and I think, let me see. Well, Mod is a spinoff from. Yep, that was it. Yeah, Ma, and then Ma, the Good Times was a spinoff from uh, Ma, because Florida was her maid. I yeah. do remember that, yep. She was her maid. That's crazy. One of my favorite shows is Good Times, uh, Martin, and Friends. And, oh, and I like Molly, Mike and Molly, but I like the mothers. The mothers make the show because his mother, she just mean as hell. And then her mother's just a drunk. So the mothers alone make me watch the show. <laughs> that's the one with Melissa McCarthy? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's she's my secret crush. Yeah, is she? <laughs> <laughs> and the sister is funny, too, on there. She a weed head. <laughs> Scarlett, have you seen that show, Mom? I saw it a couple of times, but I couldn't get into it though. But I, I did see it a couple of times. Yeah, I kind of like the mom on there. I I didn't watch it that often, but that was kind of like the best part. Oh uh, yeah, because I've I've watched this show with Lucy Liu that was really good. When I first put it on, I thought it was a documentary, right? But it was a uh, actually like a it was a sitcom. It's called uh, Why Women Kill. I, think I've seen I found it one day when I was just trying to find something new to watch on Fire Stick and I thought it was a documentary. I said, let me see why they, these women killing these fools. <laughs> but it was actually a show, but the show was really good. It's about uh, three different women who lived, they all lived in the same house in different decades. One in the 60s, one in the 80s, one in the 2000s. And then just tell their stories of why they killed. Yeah, but okay. it's a good show. Cause what I, I my department had closed for a month, so I was off work, and I was just watching show after show after show. 
I fell in love with Ozark. Oh, I love that show. Yes. Uh, another show called The Stranger. I love that one. Uh, uh, what's the show? Oh, my God. The Handmaid Tales. I haven't seen that one. Oh, my God. It's a lady in there. Her name, they call us Aunt Lydia. And be, her, her and then the guy who played the governor in The Walking Dead, I would literally stand in front of my TV and say, kill them. <laughs> kill them. Please kill this lady. <laughs> kill him. He, he, the governor in The Walking Dead had my blood pressure up. <laughs> That's oh. how I did that part because I really wanted him dead. <laughs> Please kill him so I can stop stressing. <laughs> Have you seen In the Dark? I haven't heard of that. Okay, it's about this blind lady and she becomes friends with this kid that like saved her when she was being assaulted. And mm -hmm. the kid ends up getting killed and she goes after to find out who killed him. And you can hear what's on Netflix or what? It's on Netflix. In, In the, the dark. dark. Okay, I'm gonna have to find that. Right now, my friend told me to watch Money Heist, so I'm on episode four of that. We we just finished uh, Cobra Kai last night. I haven't heard of that one either. That is a uh, it's like a further story of the Karate Kid, but it's more in. The, the you remember have you seen Karate Kid right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched the first one and a little of the second one I think. All right, so you know Johnny Lawrence, the one that he he beat him in the tournament to to become number one. This is like about Johnny and how he's trying to get his life back together again. Oh, okay. So yeah, watch that one too. It's good. Okay, and what's it? What's the name of it again? Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, and that's Netflix also. Mm-hmm. I should have invested in Netflix. They is booming. Yeah, them and, and Zoom. Zoom is like really banking it right now. That's yeah. where you make your money. Hey. Yeah, I'm going uh, to start having some shows on Zoom too. There you go. Yeah. I've been having one. I was with an old friend, but things went downhill when she thought she was uh, the boss of me. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I This was my creation, my baby, and uh so I said, you know, it's just I gotta venture out on my own. So I, I'm gonna start my first one September 19th, because um, uh, I have two live shows coming up. So uh, I just ordered me a isolation outfit. I'm like, I ain't playing with y'all. I'm gonna go on with my isolation gear, put my hat on, my shield, and my mask. <laughs> <laughs> go in here, and make my little change. <laughs> so after uh, since I have two yeah live shows coming up. Uh, back to back, then I'm gonna start mine on the 19th. So, so in the event page. So when did you get started in comedy? Uh, my first time doing comedy actually was in ninety, I think ninety one. But only did it for about a year and a half, somewhere in the early nine ninety one ninety two. Uh, did it a little less than two years. Um and stopped uh, and then I just started back up in 2008 and so I've been consistent since then. Okay. Had my own little uh, show uh, where well, was uh, this guy had this building this nursery that uh, this lady sold and so he wanted to start having stuff there so he paid me to you know bring in the comics and I host and uh, so, you know, hitting the clubs, I was out there heavy for about a good six, seven years. Uh, then I, I slowed down on the, on the clubs unless I got booked. Um, but I like the private shows, the church shows. That's what, you know, where I get the most of the, you know, change to perform. So. But hanging out in the clubs, they start getting old. And then you would think, you know, being comedians, everything would be fun and funny, but it's drama, you know, in the green room. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, later for that. Oh, I so, can only you know, I've been doing virtual shows, uh, but I just stopped, you know, I said I'm done with that uh, on Saturday. I'm going to be doing my, my own stuff. 
Yeah, which was that one I created anyway, but uh, for some reason, she thinks she did. <laughs> you so, know, teamwork and loyalty. And when that's not happening, Regina get out of whatever situation she don't like. No, nah, I don't blame you. Well, yes. Whatever got you to get up and try comedy in the first place? Uh, the first time I did in the 90s, I was, uh, I was doing the timing for a comedy competition and I, Sherry Shepard was in it. And so when Sherry Shepard was up there doing her set, I noticed she wasn't really getting a lot of laughs, but she was up there working it out. She didn't let no, none of that stop her. She didn't break character, nothing. And um, I just admired her for that. Cause you know, in the winter I think was getting a thousand dollars. So she was up there working it out. And I said, you know what, shoot, if she got the nerves to do that, I'm going to try. So, you know, me and uh, somebody, we was, you know, writing out some stuff. And it took me about five months, though, to get up there and do it. Uh, but I went on and did it. You know, I was out there doing it for about a year and a half. Uh, then I moved to Riverside and I stopped. When my kids was young, and at first I was taking them out with me. And then my mother's like, you got these kids going to bed later. So I just stopped. So um, then start back up in, in 08, because uh, one guy, one place started having comedy shows, and I just started missing it, you right? Because Riverside ain't that much to do. So I started going to the comedy club, and I said, shoot, I'm going to start back. So I talked to the guy who was hosting, and he said, okay, come back next week. And so I started from there, and... That was April 2008, and I've been still doing it. Wow. Yeah. So how would you describe your comedy? My comedy, um, I would say my comedy is mostly for women, you know, but men get a little kick out of it, too. Because men, you know, men, you can get a lot of material from them, especially the ones who think they're Casanova and all that stuff. <laughs> But yeah, most of my stuff is, you know, for me, I don't really talk about a lot of life stuff because not that I think my life is boring, but I, when I talk to my friends, I can naturally have them laughing. But when I try to get on stage in front of strangers, it don't seem the same. It don't come out the same. So I just write a lot of material. Or if I hear somebody say something that's funny, I'll be like, oh, that shit was funny. <laughs> I'll write it down and then i write a joke around it. Just like Dave Chappelle said, I write the punchline first, then I write a, a then I write a story around it. So I do the same thing. I hear something, like, oh, that's funny, but I have to make it fit me. So I just keep it. I got this book, pages of just stuff, jokes to work on. <laughs> <laughs> jokes to work on. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and then uh, when I start getting calls for clean shows i was like clean because a lot of my stuff wasn't clean so i had to just rewrite it over to kind of change it a little bit so but my my clean stuff is not as long as my adult material so clean i could probably do a good maybe 15 20 minutes depending on the crowd uh but adult i, I could do about a good 30 if, if maybe long, depending on what I can remember in this old mind, because I'd be like, oh, snap. <laughs> so it's like two jokes I always say. If I, if I say, oh, shit, I know I forgot something. But so it's two jokes I can say while I'm thinking, what didn't I say today? What didn't I say tonight? What I'm missing? And I, I'll say, tell you these two jokes while I'm waiting for something else to pop in my head. <laughs> my God. Can, can you share something with us? One joke. So one of my uh, one of my most it could be anything. Anything. Okay. So clean, dirty, it don't matter. Okay. So one of one joke I have, and I can go places, and somebody said, "Oh my God, I know you. Um, I seen you. You the freeway girl. They call me the ninety way, the ninety one freeway girl. One of the freeways out here. I got a joke where I say, ladies." You have to give out directions. You have to let a man know what you like because he going to get his. So you got to make sure you get yours. 
But if you're afraid to give out directions, you just put a map on your body like I did, and you're going to start. You're going to have him start right up here at the 91. He's going to take it to the 605, all the way down to the 405 and exit Cherry so I can get off. <laughs> oh, no. So people are, and then I got one with Teddy Pendergrass. When I say uh, Teddy Pendergrass, I said, I'm a, I said, y'all know his song, Close the Door, right? Well, I'm going to tell you how Teddy really came up with the lyrics to close the door. See, he wants y'all to think he's trying to make love to a woman, but actually Teddy was in the bathroom taking a dump. Somebody walked up, walked in on him. He was like, close the door. That's kind of a catchy tune. So he's sitting on the toilet writing the lyrics. And he gave you the biggest hint at the end of the song, what he was really doing, because Teddy starts singing, let me do what I want to do. All I want to do is make love to you. Let me do, 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 do. Uh, you see? He said at the end of the song. So, so that's, they, they, they say you the, you the Teddy girl or you the 91 freeway girl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So if you say that you had somebody that you, I guess, maybe pattern your, your comedy after, is there somebody in particular or, you, you know, you, is there somebody out there you really admire or you just like them all? Um, my favorite two comics is uh, D.L. Ugly and Tony Rock. Okay. And then I, I like Chris Rock too. And, um, uh, uh, you know, Dave, Chappelle. it's a lot of people I like, but those two are just, yeah, I, I really, really like those two, the, the best deal in, uh, in Tony Rock. Uh, growing up, I think mine was like George Carlin and you know, Red Fox. And then of course, Richard Pryor came on. Oh yeah. About the time yeah, I yeah. hit my, 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 my teenage years, about the time Eddie Murphy came on and, or she had Robin Williams and all these other guys. It's just it's hard to pick one, you know. Yeah, because we used to sneak and listen to Richard Pryor. I remember one time we was driving home from Dallas, and my uh, cousin was moving, so he he came back with us, and we he let the teenagers drive. We was like 15, 14, 15. They let us drive the car. Well, at the time, C CDs was out. And we was playing Richard Fryer in the car on the A track. Oh no. We put on the C B and my father heard my father pulled up on the side of us in in the van and said, Get that off of there. <laughs> 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 and we used to listen, you know, I used to listen to when my mother used to listen to Moms Mabley and Skilling and Leroy. Yeah. Oh my gosh! My one of my favorite albums was uh, the one Richard Pryor talked about when he uh, was uh, watching his neighbors or somebody's monkey. Monkey. <laughs> and, uh, on it, did he have the red shirt on? I think he filmed it at the Long Beach Terrace. I think that's probably it. Won it. <laughs> and then yeah, then he was talking about the dog that used to jump the fence. And uh, I remember that one. He was. The whole thing, the whole, he was talking about the, you know, the monkey first and how that yeah. monkey used to crawl up his arm and do him yeah. in the ear and all that stuff. And, yeah. <laughs> and um, he said uh, that the monkey got away and he was all upset about it. And there was this dog that used to jump the fence and chase him. Oh, yeah, I remember that. He said, he's always trying to bite him. You know I'm going to be chasing you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bite your ass tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. He's like he sat down and said, "When he was at the funeral, what's what's wrong, Rich? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. yeah, you know that monkey, that monkey I was watching. Yeah, the one who used to hump you in the ear. Yeah, man, he got away. Oh man, I'm sorry. And then he jumped over the fence and he turned around and said, "You know, Rich, I'm gonna come back and bite your ass again tomorrow." <laughs> Yeah, and and the one with the when they was at the funeral and uh, and they was eating at the repast and, and he said they ate somebody dressed and had some almonds in it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that wasn't almonds. <laughs> <laughs> she must have left the oven door open and they crawled up in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> or um, I used to sneak in and watch uh, Saturday Night Live when it was first on the air and you had mm -hmm. Chevy Chase and 
Dan Aykroyd, uh, who was it? Uh, Jane, Jane Curtin, Garrett Morris, all of them. Oh my God, those were the days. Was that like the first season, huh? Those, yeah. those were funny. I did, I did Garrett Morris um, Club a couple of times, uh, probably like three times. I did Garrett Morris show when he had he had a comedy club downtown in L.A. and then he moved it somewhere. I think somewhere in Hollywood, and uh, then he stopped. That's why when he was on, he just got the Two Broke Girls show. He always had that blues show. He loved blues. He would do blues before, either before or after his show. But uh, yeah, I did one, two, three. I did his show like three or four times. Cause three different spots. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to get into that Two Broke Girls, and I just, I can't. I just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, one of my one of my friends from Texas. He used to watch. He was like, he he said it's funny, but I'm like, he probably like cause they girls. <laughs> but he used to watch that show. Said it was funny. I tried to give it a chance too, and I couldn't get into it. I mean, I love him. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But I just couldn't get into it. I, I, it just wasn't oh, funny. Man, he had his birthday party, and I went. That place was packed, but he had it at the Barbara Morrison Theater in Lamert Park, and it's, it's a small theater. People have little um, little plays and little jazz things, but uh, it was packed, and a lot of celebrities came out to, you know, uh, to the show. And he had a lot of performers. Even uh, Beyonce Mom was there. Tina Knowles was there. Uh, I think George, not George Duke, David. What's the Duke? The guy who played in Car Wash, the the, the angry African oh. uh, Duke, something Duke. He was there. It was a lot there. Okay, this is where my brain yeah. goes goes off the rails. I know it's I know it's Duke something or yeah, Duke is in his name somewhere, but he was there. I'll, I'll think about it by two o'clock in the morning. Huh? That's yeah. a delayed reaction. <laughs> Man, you know, I used to love those old movies like Car Wash, let's say old. They were out when I was a kid, but, mm -hmm. you know, they don't make them like that either. The originality's not there to me. One one thing I noticed, like some of the, when I be scanning through Netflix trying to find something to watch, especially like the, you know, the black movies, it's all about hustling and, uh, you know, and so you get tired of watching stuff like that. So that's why I like movies like, uh, especially like Tahaji, uh, P. Henson. I, I love her movies. I love Idris Elba. I'm like, oh my God, that is my, that is my movie husband right there. Love me some Idris. And uh, so I, I know Netflix just saw a movie with uh, Nia Long and Omar Epps. Oh, yeah. So, oh. But uh, it's a new show I call P Valley, and you know, some people are talking about it's good. I've been trying to get into it, but I watch it, but it's like I don't know, kill some time. I miss those movies with with Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. Pryor. Those were funny. Yeah, but you, you know. Silver Streak and uh, what was the other one? We had the Chicken. Oh, was that it? was uh, well, you had Silver Streak and. Uh, Oh my gosh! Because how many they do about three? They they did several because there was one where they got out of prison, and um, there was the hear no evil, see no evil. Oh, okay, I remember that name. One yeah. of them was blind, and the other one was deaf. Uh, I think I saw that probably once, but I do remember that. Yeah, yeah uh, something. What, what the hell was the name of that movie? Yeah, that's another one of those I'll think about at 2 o'clock in the morning. The old movies, the teen ones I used to like was I Love Saturday Night uh, Fever. No, not Saturday Night Fever. Saturday, oh, Uptown Saturday Night. Uptown Saturday Night, yep. Do It Again and Piece of Action with Sidney Poitier and um, Bill Cosby. We watched those on the 4th of July and uh we just cracked up it was like it was a brand new movie but that's how good and funny they are because we just rolled <laughs> that's a that's like me watching those monty python movies again i haven't seen in 20 years 
I remember those. I can't remember anybody. He one had the big eyes, right, and the shaggy hair. Was that Monty Python? Monty Python was the dudes from Britain, and um, they had like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, he had big and, eyes and, and shaggy hair. Maybe I'm thinking somebody else. Uh, there's probably been somebody on there like that, but I can't think anybody. Oh, that. oh, okay. But there was uh, the Monty Python's Meaning of Life, those kind of movies. Um, Cause you, yeah, I went on YouTube watched several movies I couldn't find on Fire Stick. Uh, Cause I saw some of uh, Linda Blair first movie like Born Innocent, uh, and what was the other movie she was? Oh, Sweet Hostage, her and um, Martin Sheen. Yeah, I like old movies. Oh, I, I can watch those old movies over and over and over again. Yes, what was the imitation of life? You know, Joe, some of Joan Crawford movies. Yeah, but you know, a movie I never saw. Two, well, one I never saw. The other one I recently watched it, uh, but I never saw The Exorcist. Oh, I really? Finished Rosemary's Baby, and I just saw all of the omens one time when it was a marathon with all of them. I just laid on the couch and watched all of them because I was. I'm not really, you know, I can't, and I'm one of the people even now, I can't watch scary movies by myself. Really? Oh, no, if I wake up and I hear the music, like when Dark Shadows used to come on, oh, like, yeah. Riverside used to come on in the wee hours of the night. If I woke up two, three in the morning, I hear that music to Dark Shadows, I immediately had to turn the channel. <laughs> Man, Rosemary's Baby, that Mia Farrow, right? Yeah. What's happened with his eyes? <laughs> and you know that was uh, the the devil in there was Anton Lavey. Oh, I, okay. I never heard him, but yeah. Anton Lavey was the guy that started the uh, the Satanic Church. Oh. He wrote the Satanic Bible. Uh huh. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I, I learn something new every day. <laughs> so now you got something to even be more scared about when you want to. Look at your eyes. Why you book your eyes like that? <laughs> <laughs> An yeah. Exorcist. Oh my God, that movie still freaks me out. Yeah, I didn't watch because when my when my mom and her friend they used to trade the kids off, right? So I just remember me and and uh, Shani, we stayed at the house, but Roselle took the boys to the movie. She didn't take the girls. I just remember, and my brother, I never, ever seen my brother scared, even though he was only probably eight at the time. Never seen my brother, that's the only time I ever seen my brother scared. It's like, I'm washing dishes, and I just remember my brother bust through the door, and he just had fright all over his face, and found out that they went to go see the exes, and just on that strength alone, I just never saw it. <laughs> God, that was what, 1972? See, I was, it was before that because I wasn't, I, w I was about nine. Because I think when we moved from that place, because we stayed over there because the, uh, to finish out the school year, because we moved, uh, it probably was like 71. Because I know I was, I was, it was before my 10th birthday. I was like nine, I think, when that movie came out. Yeah. So it probably was, it was close though. Probably 71, 70, 71. I knew it was around early 70s yeah. when that movie came yeah. out. And yeah, I said, and I'm not going to even watch it. I was glad she didn't take us. <laughs> there was a show that came on when I was little, and it was called The Trilogy of Terror. Have you seen that movie? Oh, I love that movie with Karen Black. Yes, and they had the little voodoo doll. Yeah, I got the, I, I ordered the DVD off of uh, Amazon. I bought it. I have it. The little ching ching. Yes. yes. That scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Yes. I, I, that's one of my favorite uh, old ones. The trilogy of Terror. You had the three different stories. The, the twin. Yes. She was actually uh, had split personality on one of the one of then the other one was the professor who her student was uh, blackmailing her and she wound up poisoning him. Yeah. But the yeah with the little dog with the little dog yeah 
That freaked me the hell out. <laughs> it's probably, you know, I'd probably laugh at it now, but I remember as a kid being freaked out over that. <laughs> you know, it's a bunch of zombie movies, but my favorite one is Dawn of the Dead. But my first one that I remember, I was six, and it was on Easter, and my we went to the movies with my neighbor, and we saw... Uh, Dawn of the Dead, the black and white one. Well, during the movie, I was scared, terrified during the movie. But during the movie, people in the movie theater started screaming and running. And it was the scene, it was towards the end, the scene where all the zombies was going to the house. I literally thought they were running and screaming because the dead people was coming out to scream. Now, I was years old. I ran out the movie theater, and it was a bus stop in front of the movie theater. And I asked the two two ladies at the bus stop. I said, "Can you please take me home? I'm crying. Can you please take me home?" And they said, "Baby, who you with?" And I just hear my neighbor saying, "Regina, get your butt over here." But <laughs> found out later that you no, know, some people started fighting inside the movie theater. <laughs> you had to ruin it, right? Yes, I was petrified. I was just scared. Man, yeah, as corny as some of those old movies were, they just there was something about them that, that had something special about them, yeah. Like the Friday the 13th chain, yes, and yeah, Halloween, yeah. Halloween yes. Um, I, 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 was, oh but my god, was they theirs was stupid. I was like, what the heck? You should be running. Why are you sitting up there with looking until he finished killing somebody? That's dumb. You need to die. <laughs> oh, yeah. The dude that crawls down in the freaking hole in the, in the yeah. ground. Like, why? That, what the hell? Yes. Some of this stuff be like stupid. Like, they playing on our intelligence. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's a wonder that there ain't more dead white people out there <laughs> watch those movies. <laughs> You know, they use that too. They like, don't be like white people, black people, we run. We ain't waiting. <laughs> That's what Richard Pryor said. Hmm. White people be nosy, like, oh, who is, oh, is that a killer? No. You know, we finna run. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, I, now when stuff happens, people are like, what you jumping for? I said, girl, I'll be ready. <laughs> I won't make you I won't make you yeah. laugh though. You know uh, what I do for a hobby? Would make the zombies. <laughs> I'm a paranormal investigator. Uh uh, I saw that, but I. <laughs> do you do that for real? Really? Yes. What do you watch? Oh, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Brothers. Um, watch Ghost Adventures. They usually to make fun of them. Uh, Ghost Bait. Uh, what else? The uh, Haunted in the Heartland. Do you know the story of Rose Hill in Jamaica? No. Because we went to Jamaica, and so the guy that took us around, we, he said, that's Rose Hill. He, we wanted to do the tour there, and uh, he gave us a story, a little story. Of him, and my friend, she said, oh, I just saw that. What's the first show you said, Ghost Hunters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she saw the story on there. Well, this man... Uh, he married his second wife. I think was, she was the second wife because the first wife died, but he named the house after the first wife, Rose Hill. But the second lady he married, she was killing, uh, she was sleeping with the servants, and but she was killing, yes. You know that one. In the house. So that house is in Montego Bay. Well, I think we were still in Montego Bay because we drove to Ocho Rios. But yes, I was like, "Nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to see that house." <laughs> yeah, they actually did an investigation there. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen it, but but you you heard of it and saw it. Yes, I did see that. Yes. And if it wasn't for my friend saying she saw it on the on that show, I probably wouldn't have believed him. But I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I've made friends with a bunch of the guys from the show, and um, they're actually really awesome people. But the the stuff that they use nowadays to go do investigations blow mm -hmm. your mind. But uh, I'd say my 
probably one of my favorite uh, interviews that I did was with Marcus Harvey from Ghost Brothers. He had me laughing the whole freaking time. I almost couldn't finish the the, the interview. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is he a ghost chaser too, or a hunter? Or he? Yeah, he's he's a he's a paranormal investigator out of uh-huh. Atlanta. Yeah, see, nah, uh-uh. and I'd be like Scooby Doo, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> nah, I'm good. <laughs> Ain't gonna mess with them. I can't fight a ghost. <laughs> So, but you know, what's funny is when I first moved in this building where I am now, I used to think somebody was in here with me. It was strange. And when I was asleep, I literally would feel like somebody was touching me. And it wasn't for the fact I couldn't afford to move. Uh, I went to this uh, event one time, this festival, and so it was different booths and somebody was burning. He said, it smelled kind of good. I said, what you burning? He said, sage. I said, oh, okay, somehow, um, and then he said, it's, uh, I, somehow, I can't remember how we got in the conversation, but he said, it gets rid of spirits. I'm like, shit, give me five packs. <laughs> I came home, and I, every night I was burning sage and going through the house like this, just burning in the rooms. You know, you're only supposed to, sure. when you get sage, you're supposed mm-hmm. to take one strand out at a time and burn it like that, not all together. That's where people make their mistake. I, I, took, I did take one, but it had several different leaves on it. So, but I, I would just go around the house. But I never separated them. I always keep them in the rope. Some of yeah. them, though. But I didn't know that, though. Yeah, you're supposed to take them out of the rope. You take them out a couple of strands and you get mm. a little bowl. And you uh-huh. walk around with it smoking, and then you use like a feather or something to fan it around the room. That's... Oh, really? Oh, okay. I'm going to have to find me a feather then. <laughs> no, I got a feather. Actually, I got some feathers. There you got go. Hat. But I, I actually need to get some more. Uh, but most of the shops now are closed. Well, when you get done, take the string, and you put the string in a, in a, uh, a candle and burn it like that. You know, all the juices and stuff are in, oils are in that. Oh, really? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So, uh, there's my advice. I won't charge you for it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, because I'm broke. I just pay rent. <laughs> oh, you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm like, oh, my God. My, I remember just paying bills all the time. Just like everybody. And I said, you know what? I work hard. All my money go to other people. So, now I buy myself at least one thing out of each check. You, you know, should. I had two jobs for eight years. I used to work Carnival Cruise Line on the weekends. And then and trying to do comedy too, I was just burnt out. So I finally quit Carnival. I worked there from 2008 to 2015. And I just said, forget it. Because they, uh, Carnival actually gave us up as employees and uh, contracted us out to shore security. And they took away a lot of our perks. We couldn't even go on the ship and eat free no more. They took away like uh, one discount we used to get called the appreciation discount. We can get a cruise 50% off, but they took that away, you know. Uh, so I, I was just like, you know, I'm burnt out, I'm tired. So I just quit Carnival. But I was one time, uh, one of the managers, she said, when you get off the ship, you want to start working again? I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so um supervisor there I heard he hit the lottery five mil. Five mil? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I ran into one of my one of the workers. He he lived in, in my area where I work. And uh yeah, I saw him through there and he said, you know, Craig hit the lottery, got five million. I was like, damn. You no, know, lucky though. Man. Is he single? No, now so at last I heard it, uh, his wife was trying to sue him for half. <laughs> at least I, some. I think say I can turn gay for five million bucks. <laughs> I totally run out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, I, I magically uh, turned back. I'm back straight again. <laughs> it's a miracle. Oh, and you broke? Yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> So I'm back to your comedy real quick. How do you size up a room when you get ready to do your set? 
Well, I, I try to look at the audience and see if they older, if they younger, if it's more women, is it more men, is it any kids running around there? Um, or I, I normally ask whoever to book me, okay, is it clean or can I do what I want? You know, um, so if they say, oh, well, you can do what you want, just don't be too raunchy. Well, my stuff not raunchy anyway, so... Um, you know, that'd be fine. So one advice one comedian gave me, always write down at least 10 jokes on a sheet of paper. So once I kind of get a feel for the audience, then I kind of do that. Um, and just write down the 10 that I think on work. So I always have my, I basically have four different openers. And, but I, I usually close with the Teddy Pendergrass one. Or sometimes, uh, but if it's a church show, I may end with my, you know, with me looking for uh, a man, uh, but I'm going to get the pastor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it depends. On, yeah. So that's how I basically prepare for it. Okay. Check out the crowd and then write down at least 10, depending on how many minutes. If, if, I, if they want me to do 15 to 20, then I may write down... Uh, 15, because most jokes, you know, uh, that mine's not too long, so maybe a minute, no more than two. So, but I write down more than, more than I think I'm going to use just in case I forget one. And hopefully, you know, like I said, uh, when I forget, dang, what else I have on my list, basically? And then I'll tell these two jokes. It kind of, what the hell did I say today? But then what I don't like doing, but I have done it you know, a few times where I'm on one topic, I really don't like going back to that topic, but sometimes I can't figure, and then I know, uh, can't think of what I want, but let's say I talk about men first, then I move on to something else, like my, my weight, or, you. but if something else pop in my mind with men, because I know I still got two, three minutes, then I may go back to something with men that I forgot to say, but I try not to do that. I try to stick on one subject, boom, go to the next subject, boom, to the next till my time run. As soon as I see that light, I'll be like, yay. <laughs> yeah, well, I had, a, I had a friend of mine that moved to Dallas from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. and so he gets on stage and he tries to tell a, a joke about the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, well, I'm like, he said he didn't get any laughs, and everybody just kind of looked at him. I'm like, dude, you, you don't make fun. You, do you know where you are? You don't make fun of the Cowboys when you're in Dallas. I'm sorry. You just don't do that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to know your audience, man. Just because it worked yeah. in Tennessee don't mean it's going to work here. Yeah. And I remember one time I did a show, and uh, I think I must have got there late, but I walked in there. I was like, it was mostly men. I was like, oh, my God, because most of my material is for women. So with men in there, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to think of something or either stretch it out. Like sometimes we stretch it out. Like if somebody laughing, we wait till that last person laughs, then we say the next one. <laughs> you know, just stretch it out. Like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> sometimes you do, we do shows and we don't have a number of crickets. And if, and if a, a comedian go up before me or the host that, that's hosting and I know they hilarious and they get a lot of laughs, but nobody laughing, I was like, well, shit, if they ain't laughing on him, I ain't going to even worry about me. <laughs> I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. I, it makes, you know, I, I don't know if I could handle the rejection getting up there on stage if I was to try it. But all I, I, all I know is dad jokes anyway, so. Cause I did a show and I was supposed to only perform uh, then I get there and I found out I was hosting. I wasn't prepared for that. And, and I, my hosting skills was not strong. And when I tell you I bombed and I'm like, in, in the church was called the burning bush and I burnt and I've never seen people again in my life. <laughs> I would never do that place again. They probably wouldn't even want me there again. <laughs> I was so ready to go home. But a lot of performers didn't, wasn't able to come because a fire happened right on the uh, mountains on the side of the freeway. Cause I passed, I passed the fire. I mean, I could feel it. It was, I had my window down with that could feel the heat on my face. And uh, so a lot of performers were stuck in traffic. 
And even on my way home, that freeway was a parking lot for miles. Oh, no. Miles. But I think I would have rather been in that than to do that show. <laughs> so what was the first show you ever went to? First comedy show I went to? Oof. Oh, my goodness. Are you talking about like a professional comic at a comedy? Well, any any comedy oh show. I can't even remember, but I know I started going to the comedy at theater because um, my cousin was doing comedy, and I went to support him. Um, and at the time, that's when uh, everybody that's on TV now was veteran comedy. Cedric. DL, the, the Joe and, and Guy Tory, Vel Wilson, Tasha Smith, Kim Whitley, Kim, all Jamie Foxx. I seen all of them when they was veteran comics. And um like one of the most popular leads for, for black uh comics to perform. So uh but I'm trying to think, I think probably my first comedy one was probably the comedy store in uh in Hollywood. I just can't remember who was there. But I, yeah, the Comedy Act Theater, that's when I, I, I just really started going supporting my cousin. My cousin, he played the uh, crackhead and Don't Be a Menace to South Central, like drinking juice in the hood. The Wayne brother with the crackhead, man, I got these cheeseburgers. Yeah, that's my cousin. And so, no way. Together, yeah. Keith, look around Morris, he used to do Comic View. Several, he did Comic View several times and he played the mailman and Robert Townsend's The Parenthood. And he used to be with uh, Robert Townsend Television. It was like a little, almost like a living color thing. So yeah, he was in BAPS, but uh, if you blinked, you missed him because he was the the vendor right behind uh, Halle Berry and Pierre, the comedian Pierre, when they was talking after they left their job, he had the black leather hat on and he was like selling jewelry or something. <laughs> but yeah, so we do shows, we do a lot of shows together. My first one was Ron White. Ron White. Yeah, he's uh, from the Blue Collar uh, Comedy Tour. I remember the, that name, the Blue co uh, Collar t Comedy Tour, yeah. Yeah, you, you had, um, was it the, the Larry the Cable Guy and, mm -hmm. and Jeff Foxworthy? Oh, okay, I know those are two names. I think I heard of him too, though. I just can't picture his face. Ron White, he's the, uh, the old guy. He's always got a drink in his hand. He's always smoking a cigarette when he's doing his comedy. He's, I'm he's, about to see his face, but I, his name do sound familiar. But the other two definitely, I, I know who they are. The, the second one I ever went to was a, a guy that that did um, uh, hypnosis, and he had this like real big burly guy come in off onto the stage, and and uh, every time he'd do something. This guy would stop and he'd go, hi, my name's Tinker, Tinkerbell. I'm the world's biggest fairy. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is freaking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's, I was, uh, I, I, right now I have uh, two uh, pilots that I'm reading for. Uh, and one of them, they need a big, burly transsexual. So it just so happened, I was telling one of my comedian friends who's a big guy, he said, well, ask him you got a part for a big dude. So when I told him they needed a big dude for a transsexual, he was like, oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I said, come on, you and Keith can do it together. So, you know, y'all, because you know one big thing, they need two transsexuals. They both was like, hell no. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you was on TV talking about you'll suck a dick on, on okay. <laughs> you ever watch the office no okay well there's there's a there's a hispanic guy on there and he's supposed to be gay on the show but he's not gay in real life so what's the big deal oh he was i was like oh hell no <laughs> i think this show is going to be good uh he just um it was called observe and protect it's about some security guards but he sent a text this morning then he changed the name. I forgot what, what he changed the name to. So we, we filming on the 27th, so I'm excited. And I don't know what's going on with the other one. I mean, we did seven takes, but unfortunately, the we was on set for, when I tell you all day that the main character, he started falling asleep <laughs> when we was doing our scenes. So they were supposed to be calling us back, but I'm like, well, maybe they replaced me because it's been, it'll be three weeks. Sunday and they haven't called me to come back and shoot. 
Maybe they didn't like me and they replaced me. I don't know. Let, but, me, let me tell you, I waited a year and a half to shoot a pilot for a show. Mm -hmm. And when the day finally came, we spent three days filming and doing like the same scenes over and over and over and over and over again. And then, you know, we had to wait even longer for him to finish the editing and everything else. And this was just the pilot. And A and E's like, oh, hell no, we don't want this. But, oh really? So um, yeah, you talking two years and just to get rejected. Yeah, I uh dummy me, I passed up a part because it was in conflict with my job to go to uh get fitted for a costume and i didn't even know what the movie was about at the time for some reason i thought it was a biblical movie because it was called king richard so i thought it was some biblical movie uh so when they called me and said hey we want you to play the part of a neighbor uh we need you uh tomorrow to come get fitted and i was like oh my god you know i can't just call off work you know i didn't want no issues I said, well, can I go Saturday? And she was like, no. So I said, okay, well, let me see. Can I get somebody to cover me? But then when I called her back, they had already gave the part to somebody else. So when I told my son, my son was like, mom, you know that Will Smith is the star of the movie. It's about Venus and Serena's father. Really? I, oh, my God. I should have called off. <laughs> Cause I used to watch them girls practice when they was little. When they was little girls, like seven, nine years old, and they had them long bees in their head at Atlantic Park. They lived close to my aunt uh, in Compton too. Um, but uh, they was on the far end, of, what I call the far end of Compton. But um, yes, if I would have known that, I probably would have just called off and went to fitting, or at least see if I can uh, come in late, you know, after fitting. Because uh, they was actually filming when I was happened to be off the day that they were filming. But I'm just one of the people that really try not to call off work and go in. But Man. I kind of hate that. But um, And actually they filmed, it was right before the, not, the lockdown. So it was uh, like mid-February. And um, But anyway, so I'm like, I'm not going to pass up a, a, a next opportunity. So when this one came up, the... Uh, the two came up, uh, then I said, okay, let me go for them, you know. Hey, you never know. Something will click. Yeah, I say everything. They say, well, they say everything happened for a reason. Sometimes I'd be like, why, Lord? <laughs> why, God? Why me? Yeah, well, you just have to trust. The universe has got a plan for you. Yeah. So, yeah, I like, you know, I just, like I said, try to stay busy and have fun, you know. And so you, you said you're going to be doing a uh, virtual event, right? Yes, yeah, a tipping jar comedy. So I'm, I'm going to be making an event. I'm only going to do it once a month because uh, the other one uh, we was doing every Saturday. But now with I got a lot of projects coming up uh, and shows because um, I just got hired for a birthday party in Vegas too. Um, then I'm just going to do the show once a month. And we also going to be doing a little um, uh, show with my cousin because he have this, uh, it's like a little talk show. And we talk about current events and stuff. Uh, so he called it the Zoo Team. We're going to start that on the 19th too. I think he's, I don't know if he's going to do a live, you know, that's his project. And the other one is mine, but we support each other. So we got the Zoo Team coming out. And then the tipping jar. So it's going to be, I'm going to give, the show is going to be free, but I will be asking for tips so I can pay for, you know, pay the comics, compensate them. Because uh, I have uh, Sean Morgan, he's going to do the first show. He won uh, Bill Bellamy's second season of Who Got Jokes. And, um, and then I also have uh, Dexter Smiles, who's a, another comedian. He traveled a lot, opened up for, you know, different uh singing artist he's mostly a clean comic and but sean is not so i got two coins you know opposite sides of each other because Sean is more raw and uh funny and dexter is more clean you know so, yeah sometimes it works and sometimes yeah. it doesn't i've, I've had i've posted i sent you the link too yes please as i like to put that in the description and okay. uh, in our advertisements and um okay. And it, how do people find you? 
Um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Facebook. Everything Regina Ivory, and that's I V E R Y, not the O. I'll tell you why. I, I heard we don't have, we not I V O R Y, but so yeah, I'm all three uh, social medias Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Regina R E G I N A Ivory, I V as in Victor, E R Y. Yeah, so because I'm um, trying to see how the show is going to pan out, so I didn't I didn't pay for Zoom, at least not yet. I may, I'm just, but I can get up to a hundred people on there for free. But uh, yeah, so we'll see, you know, how it go. Somebody already gave me a tip because they said oh, we don't have cash out, but here, let me give you a tip now for the comics. Yeah, so you, you know, if you do Zoom, you if you do the free one, you only get forty five minutes. Yeah, but you know what? I uh I've done Zoom before for like uh, uh my friend Bridal Shower and they gave us an hour. They sent me a message saying we're gonna give you an extra ten minutes and then I they sent me another one because we did I did an hour twice, but if it's only forty minutes, that's fine because I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna bring on the two comics and then I'm gonna uh let my cousin close out and cause he loved to talk and it's hard to get him off the microphone. <laughs> so he always my closer. He, yeah, you can't start with him because he, he he he's a mic whore. <laughs> Next time we do a comedy show, you should come on and, and join everybody. All I do is host. I let everybody else do their thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, just keep me in yeah, as long as I don't have rehearsal or anything and I use it home from work at uh by six. So um yeah, because I uh, I just actually got hired for uh a show. It's in Dallas. It's a women's conference, and they wanted me on at six. But I said I'd just be walking in the door. So if, if you can get me on by six forty-five, give me enough time to take off my work wig and put on my uh, my comedy wig and and make up my face. <laughs> I should be ready. <laughs> and log, you know, I should be ready by six forty-five. So she said, okay, she'll put the singer on first. And yeah, then I, you know, got my. Uh, got hired for a birthday party in Vegas, so yay. Mm. Yeah. Two live shows coming up. Wow, I've never been to Vegas. I want to go at least once. Never been to Vegas? I, I was seeing somebody who never been to Vegas. So I'm like, okay. So he was like, what you want for your birthday? I said, you know what, since you've never been to Vegas, let's go. So we met out there. Like, how you 50 and never been to Vegas? <laughs> um. I'm a loser. <laughs> and see, now people are going. My friends are leaving tomorrow. I wish I could go with them, but I, I just, uh, I just pay rent. <laughs> but um, my daughter, when my daughter, she be in Vegas, like I be in Texas, and um, it's not still much to. I guess it's not much to do at night, but I'm. I'll see when I go out there. But I'm not a gambler anyway, because uh, if I lose forty dollars, I'm gonna be crying. I'm like, mm-mm. I'm a gambler. I got married twice, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped that. I've I been once, and I, I don't need to be married again. I'm allergic to it. <laughs> 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 yes, me is allergic to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Virginia, I like my freedom. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't blame you. I mean, those 10 years of freedom were pretty cool for me, but I have to say I've, I've met somebody that, takes good care of me. Oh, well, that's good. If, if that come along, I'll welcome it. But right now, it's just having happened. <laughs> well, if people say marriage is 50-50, it's 100-100 or it don't work. Mm -hmm. I heard somebody say that on something, too. Uh, I think something I read, maybe it was Viola Davis, something I read that she said. Yeah. Yep. And I'm a team player, though. But it's like, you have to be a team player, too, because I can't do That's you know what happened with my marriage. He, um, I had to do everything, you know, I mean, he wouldn't help me with the kids. And, um, then one weekend he stayed out all weekend. I'm like, oh, um, since you finna act like you single, you just finna be single. <laughs> it was just, I'm not finna be cooking for you, washing and, and, and taking care of kids. And you out there so fancy free doing what you want. No, Regina out. <laughs> Uh, I do my share. My wife cooks and I eat. I mean, that's that's fair, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> good to me. No, we share we share the housework and everything else. I mean, she does quite a bit more than I do because I'm not physically able to. But um, I mean, it it if it wasn't for us working together, it wouldn't work. Yeah, you have to. You you have to. You know, can't be selfish. I've seen several marriages like that, and uh, but then to a lot of me and my friends, we got married young, so I don't think marriage is for youngsters. No, I was nineteen the first time. Yeah, and I was twenty two. I was out by the time I was twenty nine because I'm like I was not happy, and I'm like I'm not going to live my life in miserable. You in misery, you get one life to live. Mm -hmm. And I'm finna, yeah. I my I have to enjoy my. I'm I can't be living in be depressed and sad. I mean, you already have enough obstacles in your way, so uh, that's why I tell my kids, you don't have to go look for trouble, cause trouble gonna find you. So mm -hmm. don't for it. You know, just whatever obstacle get in your way, you just have to deal with it. Make a plan and deal with it. You know, I just, right. in the mornings I'm, I write down my agenda, everything I need to do. And what I get done, I check it off. What I don't go on my agenda the next day until it's done. Like Delta ain't send me my refund yet <laughs> on a flight. Yes, June first. It's after September, and they still haven't. So I already went off on them on 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 Twitter, and they said, "Okay, oh, you hear me in my DM?" And <sighs> got a fifty-five business day delay. I said, every time I call y'all, y'all got some type of delay. Mm -hmm. So it, yes. They can give me my money. <laughs> I know that's right. Yes. <laughs> so, damn, I'm, I said I'm gonna be a thorn in your side. I'm, I'll be a thorn in everybody's side until Virginia get what I want or or what you owe me. Yes. <laughs> Call me th thorn. <laughs> oh, mighty thorn. Huh. <laughs> That's right. I make my agenda every morning. Yeah. Oh, this not haven't worked out yet. Oh, okay. I'm gonna wait on them. They said give them a month. And when that month come and I ain't got what I was supposed to get, then now you go back on the top of my list. Hey, watch out. The thunder is gonna come down, right? Huh. Yeah, my friend be like, Oh girl, they don't know who they fucking with when they mess with you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Regina, it has yes. been an honor and a privilege to have you on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've been, and likewise. And unfortunately, our time has come to an okay. end. We actually went over, but it's okay. I enjoyed this. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. And I am going to uh, find you on Facebook. You said you hit me up, right? I just did. I just hit Good. you up on that. And I'll inbox you my, uh, my card. And then when I come to Austin, I'm going to let you know I'm there, but you know, I, I, got, I get amnesia sometimes, you know, I went to the doctor, I said, oh my God, I think I got dementia. She was like, Miss Ivory, people with dementia don't realize they have it. I said, that's because they dumb dementias. <laughs> I'm smart. I know I can't remember nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got the CRS. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll send the card and so, and um, yeah. Yes, and you get to Austin. We got to, to go out somewhere to eat. Okay. It will be a blast. And don't forget, Round Rock Donuts. Okay. I, as soon as I get there, I'm going to tell my son we got to find. We're going to uh, go eat that for breakfast. <laughs> I guarantee you will not regret that. Okay. <laughs> and thank everybody for tuning in and, and thank you. watching yes. and, and always supporting us. And Regina, tell everybody goodbye. Okay, bye-bye, you guys. Look me up, Ivory, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yay. Awesome. Bye-bye. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast. Thank you.